Mount Rainier National Park is located in Pierce County and Lewis County in Washington State. It covers 236, 381 acres of land, including the 14,411 foot tall stratovolcano Mount Rainier. Human activity in the region has been traced back to 4,000 to 5,800 years before the present, based on a projectile point that was found along the Snow Lake Trail. Hunting camps believed to have been used by the Columbia Plateau tribes between 1000 and 1700 AD have been found, but this area was probably not ever permanently inhabited. In February of 1893, the Pacific Forest Reserve was established encompassing 967,680 acres of land, including Mount Rainier. In February of 1898, it was combined with other lands to form the Mount Rainier Forest Reserve. It was reestablished on March 2nd of 1899 by President William McKinley as Mount Rainier National Park, making this the nation's fourth national park. On February 18th of 1997, it was designated a National Historic Landmark District due to the 42 locations listed on the National Register of Historic Places that are found within the park. Four of these locations are also considered National Historic Landmarks. In 2006, the park was closed due to excessive flooding caused by a Pineapple Express rainstorm on November 6 that had caused 18 inches of rain to fall within 36 hours. Pineapple Express refers to a narrow horizontal strip of moisture that builds up around Hawaii, hence the name, and often causes heavy precipitation on the west coast of the United States and Canada. The park reopened on May 5th of 2007, though some areas, including the Sunshine Point Campground and parts of the Carbon River Road, were washed away and have not reopened. Even in a normal year, Mount Rainier gets a lot of precipitation, not all of which melts, giving it more than 25 glaciers and snowfields that cover 35 square miles in total. The Emmons Glacier, which is located on the northeast side of the mountain, covers 4.3 square miles, which is the largest surface area of any glacier in the contiguous United States. The Carbon Glacier has the largest mass of any glacier in the contiguous United States. Around 10,000 people attempt to climb Mount Rainier each year, but only about half make it to the summit. At lower elevations, the climate of the park is classified as a Mediterranean-influenced humid continental climate, and at higher elevations, as a subarctic climate. The average extreme minimum temperature in the park is negative 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and Paradise, which is an area on Mount Rainier's southern slope, is considered one of the, if not the, snowiest place on the planet. In 1956, just over 30 feet of snow were on the ground in the area, and between 1971 and 1972, it set a record with 1,122 inches of snowfall. The park includes subalpine meadows and alpine tundra, as well as old growth forest regions. Each of these areas has its own flora and fauna, Half of the alpine zone, which extends from the tree line to the mountain summit, is permanently covered by snow and ice. The rest is covered with alpine vegetation, including heather. The heather communities are the oldest known plant communities in the park, with some varieties having been present in the area for over 10,000 years. In the subalpine meadows, which can be found between elevations of 5,000 and 7,000 feet, snow can be present even into the summer months, but when it is not present, wildflower blooms are a popular attraction at the park. Vegetation here includes heather, huckleberry, mountain daisy, glacier lily, avalanche lily, <laughs> black sedge, moss, uh, mosses, hawkweed, lupine, mountain bunch grass, and alpine buckwheat. Lower elevation forests consist of western hemlock, Douglas fir, and western red cedar. As elevation increases, Pacific silver fir, western white pine, noble fir, and Alaska yellow cedar become more common. High elevation forests above 4,500 feet are characterized by mountain hemlock, subalpine fir, Engelmann spruce, and white bark pine, as well as more Alaskan yellow cedar. There are a variety of animals that inhabit the park, including golden eagles, pika, shrews, bobcats, and red foxes. Mount Rainier was originally named Tacoma or Tahoma by the local natives. In, 19, in 1792, sorry, Captain George Vancouver, Vancouver who sailed into the Puget Sound, named the mountain after Peter Rainier, who had been a Navy officer during the Revolutionary War. And unlike Mount Denali slash McKinley, there does not seem to be any confusion over the names. Crater Lake National Park is located in Southern Oregon and encompasses 100, 
83,224 acres of land, including the culture of Mount Mazama, in which the lake is located. 7,700 years ago, Mount Mazama, a 12,000 foot tall volcano, erupted violently and collapsed, forming the caldera that now contains Crater Lake. After the eruption, Mount Mazama was reduced to 8,157 feet tall. There are no streams flowing in or out of Crater Lake, so all of its water comes from the precipitation and leaves through evaporation or by seeping out underground. The clear blue color of the lake is maintained because there's no sediment or mineral deposits that are carried into the lake when all the water enters this way. The lake is 1,923 feet deep, making it the largest body of fresh water in the United States. Though Mount Mazama is currently dormant, it is expected to erupt sometime in the future. The lake also contains a small island known as Wizard Island, formed from a volcanic cinder cone, which has a crater that is 500 feet wide and 100 feet deep. Though there is evidence of human activity dating back at least 10,000 years and prior to the eruption of Mount Mazama, there were likely no permanent human settlements on the mountain. At the time of the eruption, the Makalak people were living in the region and witnessed the eruption of the volcano. This became a part of their oral tradition as was passed on to their descendants, the Klamath people. According to traditional Klamath culture, the eruption was caused by a battle between the spirit of the mountain, I hope I'm pronouncing these names right, Lao, and the spirit of the sky, Skill. There is also a similar story describing the eruption in Umpqua culture, although it features different spirits. For this reason, both the mountain and the lake are very significant. To these cultures. On June 12th of 1853, three gold prospectors came across the lake and named it Deep Blue Lake. However, this name didn't stick and it became known as Crater Lake. Many other features of the lake, including Wizard Island, Lau Rock, and Scale Head, were named by William Gladstone Steele, a male character, sorry, a male carrier who began pushing for the recognition of the region and establishment of a national park in 1870. Apparently, he read about the discovery of Crater Lake in the newspaper and that his lunch was wrapped in and became interested in the area. He seems like a really interesting person, honestly, so I would encourage you to look him up. On May 22, 1902, Crater Lake National Park was established by President Theodore Roosevelt. In 1915, Crater Lake Lodge was opened, and in 1918, the 33-mile-long Rim Drive Scenic Highway was completed. Like Mount Rainier, Crater Lake gets a massive amount of snow annually, about 43 feet a year, making it one of the snowiest places in the United States. This snow may not melt until June, which causes some parts of the park to remain closed during parts of the year. The park's climate is classified as a dry summer subarctic climate, and temperatures have been recorded as low as negative 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite this, however, the lake seldom freezes over because its depth allows the bottom to maintain a fairly constant temperature. The last time that the lake completely froze over was in 1949 during a particularly long and cold winter. Then in 1985, 95% of the lake's surface froze. The Mazama newt, a rough-skinned newt, is found only in Crater Lake. There are believed to be no native fish in the lake, but between 1888 and 1941, non-native fish species such as salmon and trout were introduced and they continue to live in the lake. Some of these introduced species, specifically crayfish, may be threatening the newt populations. Other animals in the area include Canadian lynxes, chipmunks, pecum, muskrats, pronghorns, American dippers, peregrine falcons, hummingbirds, and Canada geese. There are over 700 native plant species in the park, many of which are threatened by invasive plant species such as St. John's wort, thistles, and spotted canapweed. Some of these plants, including the pumice grape fern, which can be found on Mount Scott and around the Calder Rim, uh, the white bark pine and Mount Chasta Arnica are also considered to be threatened. A variety of wildflowers grow in the park and the forests that surround the mountain contain black cottonwood, quaking aspen, incense cedar, and a variety of pine and fir species. Swimming is allowed in some areas of the lake and cross-country country skiing, snowmobiling, and sledding are popular in the winter. There are several short hiking trails within the park, including the 2.5 mile long Rim Drive Trail, which leads to Mount Scott, the highest point in the park, at 8,929 feet. If you want to visit Wizard Island, you can take a boat to it for the day during the summer months, but camping on the island is not allowed. Interestingly, all the boats that are currently in the lake were carried there by helicopter. 
there's no way for them to get in and there's no way for them to get out. Fishing is allowed in the lake without a license and there are no limits on which or how many fish you take. But I don't think that you're allowed to take the newts. <laughs> Redwood National Park is located on the coast of Northern California. The National Park is actually part of a complex of parks that includes the National Park along with the Del Norte Coast, Jedediah Smith, and Prairie Creek Redwood State Parks. Collectively, they are known as Redwood National and State Parks, and they take up 38,982 acres of land. For the purpose of this video, however, I'm just going to be referring to them as one park. Evidence of human activity in the region has been found as early as 1000 BC. Several groups lived in the region, including the, I know I'm going to butcher these names, so I apologize in advance. The Tolua, Karak, Chilua, Chilula, Wyot, and Yurok. According to an 1852 census, the Yurok population was an estimated 2,500 and 55 Yurok villages were established. The Cholula inhabited, inhabited the Redwood Creek Valley until the 1860s, and there are two Cholula village sites located in the park today. As you might expect, redwood trees are a significant part of these cultures. The region was explored by Jedediah Smith in 1828, and in 1850, a secondary gold rush brought people to the region, which of course placed a lot of strain on the native populations. After this minor gold rush ended, people began logging redwood trees. By 1910, extensive logging began to become a concern for both conservationists and citizens, and in 1911, California Re Representative John E. Raker proposed the establishment of a national park. In 1918, the Save the Redwoods League was founded by four members of the Boone and Crockett Club, a wildlife and habitat conservation organization. Various measures were taken to preserve the trees, and on October 2nd, 1968, Redwood National Park was established by Pre President Lyndon B. Johnson. On September 5th of 1980, it was designated a World Heritage Site. The most famous features of the park are, of course, the redwood trees. The coast redwood is the tallest species of tree in the world, having been measured as high as 380 feet. They are also among the oldest species in the world and are believed to have, to have existed along the California coast for at least 20 million years. There are currently 38 1,982 acres of old growth forest protected by the park, though this is just a fraction of the forest that originally existed before it was logged. The world's tallest known living tree, Hyperion, is located in the park. The tree is believed to be between 600 and 800 years old, and its location has not been disclosed in order to protect it from damage. Other trees in the park include coastal Douglas firs and Sitka spruce, which are also extraordinarily tall tree species that can grow to be over 300 feet tall. Other, other species that aren't quite as impressive are the evergreen hardwood tan oak, Pacific ma madrone, big leaf maple, California laurel, and red elder. Huckleberries, blackberries, salmon berries, azaleas, and ferns can also be found within the park. The park contains several ecosystems, m which contain many rare and endangered species, such as the tidewater goby, the bald eagle, stellar sea lion, and, northern spotted, and the northern spotted owl. Other animals include bobcats, cougars, coyotes, beavers, Pacific gray whales, cormorants, blue heron, river otter, black-tailed deer, and Roosevelt oak, which at one point almost went extinct in the region, but were re-established. The state parks have campsites with driving access, but the national park can only be reached by hiking. Backcountry camping is regulated to prevent overuse and requires a permit, and of course can only be done at designated sites. Fishing with a license is permitted, but hunting is not. Popular activities in the park include horseback riding, mountain biking, kayaking, and canoeing. Interestingly, the scenes on Endor and Star Wars Return of the Jedi were filmed in this area. As I've said before, I'm not much of a movie watcher, but I do remember my family watching Star Wars when I was younger. Most of it bored me, but I liked the scenes on Endor because I thought that the Ewoks were cool. They're like killer teddy bears that live in the forest. It's hilarious. I actually have not been to this park, but I would definitely like to go sometime in the future, and I hope that when I go, I see some Ewoks. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be continuing this series in a couple weeks with three more California parks, including Yosemite, which I do have a few anecdotal stories from. So if you did enjoy this video and would like to see some more, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye!